Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and in this Cinema 4D quick tip, um, I'm going to be showing you how you can use the interactive render region to speed up render changes and corrections. So let's just jump in. Okay, so I've got a scene set up here, and um, it's the usual thing. I've got a background sky, got some lights in there, I've set up a camera that's locked as well, and I've got some objects in here. It's just this platform, I've got some boxes here. Uh, this little shack. I've just knocked this up really quickly and I've got a little conveyor belt that's on a loop as well. And if I hit play, you'll see that these boxes go into this other box at the end and it loops around on itself. So that's it. It's a pretty simple scene, but I just wanted to use this to um, show you what I mean by being able to speed up your renders using the interactive render region. If I go into settings, uh, go to save. I'm saving out as a PNG. It's the usual thing. I've got some ambient occlusion in there. Um, here are my physical settings. And I go to render this out, which I've already done actually. But um, before I do that, let's make sure that uh, the output is just current frame. Let's just give this a render. I'm not actually saving this out, but I just wanted to make a note of how long a single frame takes to render. Okay, so that's done, and you can see here it took 11 seconds for that frame. Now, 11 seconds per frame across this four-second period is going to be quite a while. And in fact, I've already rendered this out. Um, so if we go to my video editing software, you can see that I've already got a sequence in the timeline. And if we enlarge this, this is what we've got. Now, I'm sure many of you know the pain of having to make changes, whether that's uh, changes you want to make or a, or a client comes back to you and says, oh, can we do this or can we do that? You think, oh, I don't really want to render out every single one of those frames. I mean, in this case, it's not so bad, but um, if you had a render that maybe you left running for a day or two and then the client comes back and says, we need to change this and you just think, I've got to render that entire thing out again, there may be a way that you can help speed that process up. So for instance, in this, I've got uh, these boxes here, and um, you can see I've got a yellow line going around this uh, conveyor belt. If your client came back, or even you yourself decided that you wanted a yellow line around these boxes, um, there's a way you can do that without having to render out the entire sequence again, you know, creating your ye yellow line around these boxes, and then rendering out every single frame of this animation. So I've actually made an object called boxes outline, so let's unhide that. And as you can see, here's my boxes outline. So what would you do instead of rendering out the entire animation again? Well, what you can do is you can go down to interactive render region, and you can actually use this to set up where your region's gonna be. So you can grab the top there. Remember, I only need to uh, add this yellow line. So you just gotta make sure that that's in uh, side of our little region there and getting nice and tight on that and now what you can do is go to your render settings go to your output and you've got a little checkbox here for render region so let's just click that on fold it down and then you can copy the location of the left border the top border right border and the bottom border so in actual fact the size of this box you know its location of its ed edges. So we can click this button here that says copy from IPR and it takes all the values from this. We now no longer need this so we could actually turn it off if we wanted to. If I was to render this now, this is what we get. So let's uh, let's go and save this. So save, PNG, I'm gonna, uh, I've already got one here but I'm gonna overwrite that. Let's replace it. And uh, let's save this. So let's go and save that, overwrite it. And there we go, we've got our little section there. So now going back to my video editor, let's uh, go drag that in. Uh, I'm in the wrong place, still overlays, there we go. So here's our box outline. I'm gonna load that into the scene and then drag it over our footage. And make it fit our timeline and enlarge the image. Now you see we've got a problem. We've got this huge black area. Now I could get rid of that in my video editing software. I could uh, maybe mask it out or key it out 
although that wouldn't be good because you probably key out some of the stuff in here but yeah maybe maybe use a mask or whatever you're going to do but there's a much simpler way of doing this actually so i'm going to delete this out of my scene and also out of the project in general go back to cinema 4d and all we have to do is make sure that we've got the alpha channel clicked on and also using a image format that supports alpha channel in my case i'm using png that's absolutely fine so let's render this out again, overwrite, and now we have this, it looks exactly the same, but now it's got a alpha channel. So let's go back to our video editing software and import again. And all I have to do now is put this over uh, above my original layer. And you can see I can toggle this on and off. So there's the uh, outline on the box, there's with it without. And if we enlarge this, you can see now that for the cost of doing one render, I've got a completely new sequence. And I didn't have to render out each frame of this animation, which would have been an absolute uh, ball ache. So there you go. One frame saved us there. You know, the, you wanted to add something and you have for very little cost in terms of time. Um, let's go and change something else. We could even change the color of the roof here so let's uh, put that on override this pink material we've now got a yellow roof uh, we could box it up much the same way as we did before we can just move this entire thing up here frame our roof and in fact if we um, select our shack we can see the outline of it when we move the window which will help us so there we go Jobs are good, and, and the same settings as well. We go back, go to output, scroll down our render, render region, copy it, so it's in the same location, and uh, making sure the alpha channel's on. I've already done one here, you can see, but we can override that. Uh, image format that supports an alpha channel, turn alpha channel on, give that a render. There you go. We can close this back to our video editor and now we can change our pink roof here to a yellow one just by overlaying that on top and again we can turn it on and off and there you go so now we've got this round the boxes and a different color roof and we've managed to get that very very quickly now you can actually do this for animations as well so we know that a render of this full scene takes about 11 seconds. Uh, I'm going to turn save off for the moment. What if we wanted to re-render the actual part of the image that's been, well, part of the video that's animated? So I'm just going to fold down my conveyor belt, and you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here. And this is my package cloner here. So I'm just going to duplicate this package, take off this material, and put on a new one let's put a yellow one on there and i'm also gonna um, create a sphere as well and you can see that it's already in my cloner here i just need to scale this down so it fits on our uh, conveyor belt there and i could give that a blue material there we go but we can do the same thing we know this entire frame takes about 11 seconds so let's make the interactive render region uh, in a place for all the animated stuff, basically. So what's animated is just the conveyor itself. So everything included in the conveyor. So I'm just going to move this down. Also, the things falling into the box need to be included in this as well, because that's all moving. So all of this stuff here. So I think that's a large enough area to catch any possible shadows and all the rest of it. So again, we just go into our output, fold down the render region, copy from the interactive render region, the locations of all of this, and now we've got that. We can, uh, we can do a quick test to see how long a frame would take with just that. So let's uh, give that a quick render. There we go. 
and that took five seconds. That's half the time it took to render the entire frame. And over the amount of frames we've got, which is about four seconds, that's a massive time saver. And if you had a project that was a much longer in terms of uh, render time and the length of the animation, that could be massive. We've saved 50% time there. So I've already took the liberty of rendering this uh, sequence out, this new sequence. So if we go back to our video editor, I can import sequence two, which is here. This is an image sequence. We'll bring that in. It's at the correct frame rate. And I can just dump this on top. And as you can see, we can toggle this on and off. And we've got a bunch of different objects there. Uh, I don't think this actually loops because of the random clone clones, but yeah, a bit of a jump there. But there you go. Instead of rendering out the entire thing again, we've rendered out a couple of still frames and a very specific region of the animation. Um, and we've saved a bunch of time there. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can follow me on social media at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. And make sure to visit me at digitalmeet.uk where you can vote for upcoming tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.